subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Assam begins voting tomorrow and this is a crucial election for the Congress which lost in 2016 after being being in power for three consecutive terms. Now leading the campaign among other Congress leaders is Gaurav Gogoi, member of parliament from Koliabor and he's with us today to talk about the Congress in Assam, the chance, chances of the party in this election and what the key issues are. Gaurav so uh, you know as I said this is a very crucial election for the Congress. and yet in this election the congress is going without a cm face without one face to lead the party now we know your father uh, mr torun gogoi was a hugely popular leader and that's something that helped the congress a lot but do you feel that not having a face not projecting a face is going to go against the party in any way no because projecting a cm face also means projecting someone's individual ambitions and right now when in assam there are 40 lakh unemployed youth when women in microfinance um, groups are bearing the brunt of you know increasing debt and are forced to sell off their homes to pay off that debt from microfinance institutions there we are not in this election for our own individual ambitions assam is at a very crucial point both economically and culturally economically we are at one of our lowest points in our economic growth 5 years ago we were the second fastest growing state in the country as per the state gdp today we are at position number 20 5 years ago we were talking about promoting the cultural aspirations of all the different tribes and ethnic communities that make up assam today the bjp is ramming down caa on our throats and forgetting about its promises to all the other tribes whether it is about st status whether it is about development councils whether it is about those people who are left out of the nrc they are only focused on forcing down the ca down our throats so this is an election in which who is the chief minister is not the important question what is the future direction of assam is the more important question So God of you mentioned CA how much of an issue is it on the ground are people really talking about it or has the BGP managed to bury that uh, you know uncomfortable aspect I uh, CA is very much a part of our conversations with the people of Assam it's an issue which has really embedded into their soul and into their consciousness and they know at in inside at you know in the in the uh, in the depths of their heart that this is an issue that people of assam are uncomfortable with it they don't accept the ca it is something which is undemocratic as lakhs of people have protested against it and it is quite unfortunate that in a protest movement where five young boys lost their lives uh, to 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 police violence we have a government which says that this ca is not a factor at all are they trying to say that the lives of five young martyrs are not a factor congress feels the opposite in our manifesto we've said two things a is a guarantee that once our mahajod government comes to power we will take on the might and the arrogance of the central government and of prime minister modi and there there will be in the future an epic political and constitutional fight between the government of assam representing the will of the people of assam versus the government of india representing the will of the people sitting in nagpur and i'm confident that the people of assam will win and secondly in our manifesto we have also said that those families who have lost their son in the caa agitation will also be given the same respect as the respect we give to our freedom fighter families and both the families of freedom fighters and the family of the five young ca martyrs will receive a government pension in the future right so uh, you know bjp's focus in assam like it is uh, in other parts of the country has been on building big infrastructure and welfareism how do you counter that what do you go to people uh, and say to counter that well when it comes to big infrastructure projects which is the project that the bjp has started and completed the prime minister has only completed projects which have been whose bulk of the work has been done in the previous congress era whether you talk about the bogibil bridge 95% of the work was done 
whether you talk about the Dhola Sadia bridge, 99% of the work was done. In fact, it was very unfortunate that this government stooped to such a level that when my father, the late Chief Minister Tarun Gogoi, went to inspect the Dhola Sadia bridge upon its completion, because it was a baby of, of the people of Assam, its work was done during his tenure and Dr. Manmohan Singh's tenure, the BJP government refused to allow him to visit the site. He was barred. So this is the respect that the BJP gives to the former chief minister and who could not even visit the, his own project that he built with his love, affection and dedication. So in terms of the infrastructure, there's nothing. In fact, on the contrary, public sector units are shut. Our paper mills in Jagi Road and Kachar are shut. Public sector units are increasingly being sold to the private sector. Our airport has been sold to Mr. Adani. Various, mill, various oil refineries, which are profitable, uh, the government is increasingly trying to sell them off, whether it is the Numoliga refinery or the Namrup refinery. So when it comes to infrastructure, the only policy of this government is to sell to its private crony capitalist friends. When it comes to welfare schemes, what, how can a welfare scheme, which the BJP talks about, which is of providing Rs. 830, provide any relief when gas is priced at 900? So you talk about the government's pet project of the Ujala. All these cylinders are lying empty. You visit any poor person's house, you will see a cylinder, but that cylinder will not be used because gas is now being priced as 900. You go to a small shop and you ask him how his business is doing. And he says that after the petrol and diesel prices have been hiked to rupees 90, the cost of his goods, the cost of purchasing goods has increased. So nobody is doing well. Not the farmers, not the small traders, not the self-help groups. So what welfare is being created? The, uh, whether it's unemployment, whether it is maternal mortality, whether it's education or health. Assam is nowhere in the top five or top ten of states. We're pretty much in the lower half. So this government has failed and that's why people see a ray of hope and expectation in the Congress party. Because 20 years ago, Assam was in a similar situation of economic difficulty. And at that time, when the BJP was in center, Vajpayee Ji's government was there, a Congress government came to Assam and turned it around. And that's what's going to happen in 2021. History is going to repeat itself. Right. Uh, Gaurav, so, you know, you talked about the CA, but there is a slight dichotomy there. The Congress also talks about the CA, mostly in the Brahmaputra Valley, does not talk about it in the Barak Valley. Is there a discomfort there? Is there a lack of uh, understanding as to how to deal with this? Not at all. There is no dichotomy. If you see our manifesto in the Barak and you see our manifesto in Brahmaputra Valley, CA is clearly mentioned. On the other hand, if there is a dichotomy, it is in the BJP's manifesto. In Bengal, they will talk about CA. In Assam, they will not talk about CA. That is a, that is a party that is showing its character of trickery and deceit. They are duping the people of Assam. They are con uh, deliberately conning the people of Assam by avoiding the mention of CA when they have mentioned in their Bengal manifesto. CA has even a more unique place in Assam, given our own history of the Assam Accord. Uh, the Assam Accord is linked to the CA and one cannot avoid or bypass that link. So I think that if there is any dichotomy, if there is any deceit or there is any trickery, it is in the BJP party, the Congress party is very clear. Within Bara, within Brahmaputra Valley, we give utmost importance to the Assam Accord. We want the Assam Accord to be implemented and if there are issues of foreigners or doubtful citizens, we want the wheels of justice in our foreigners tribunals to move faster so that the ruling can be more expedient. Right. Okay, very quickly, Gaurav, how do you see this uh, alliance, the coalition that the Congress has got into with the AIUDF performing? Are you also afraid of losing a bit of your uh, uh, base among the minority community by getting into this alliance? See, first of all, let me explain to your viewers what this alliance is. This alliance was conceptualized by my late father, Tarun Gogoiji, last year. It was conceptualized as a grand alliance of forces opposing the CAA. It was not conceived of two months prior to this election. 
But last year when there was a Rajya Sabha election, the Congress party and AIUDF together came together to send a civil society activist, a prominent journalist who had le lent his voice against CA, Mr. Ajit Bhuya, to the Rajya Sabha. And since then, we've been broad basing our alliance. We've got the left front parties on board. Now, to give you an idea of how effective this alliance is, you ask the BJP pa state party president, where is he contesting his seat from? He is not contesting from the same seat that he won last time. Why? Because there is a CPM candidate there. And the Congress CPM alliance is so strong that he is the BJP state president is afraid and he has run away to another seat. So let us A, understand why this alliance was formed. Let us B, also understand who are the other actors and their role and their influence. And now with the Bodo People's Front, Hagrama Mohilari coming in, they are not only in his, you know, in the uh, 13, 14 seats, which form the Bodo territorial region, but around 19 seats outside of that, Mr. Hagrama Mohilari, the Bodo People's Front, play a convincingly a very strong role. So this is a broad-based alliance. This is a strong alliance. And this is an alliance that is only going to, that is only respecting the will of the people of Assam, who want all forces opposing CA to be united. Right now, that is the single most important factor in the people's mind, because they see this election as a contest between the parties who want CA vis-a-vis -vis the parties who don't want the CA. Right. All right, Gaurav, thank you so much for finding time. I know you're in the middle of a very, very hectic campaign, but thank you for taking out time to speak to the print. Uh, do keep tracking us for more ground reports from Assam. This is Ruhi Tiwari reporting from Guwahati.